So you want to know what kind of motor vlog that you need to do for YouTube? Well, stick around and I'll tell you all about it. Revelator Alf. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alf, the channel about motorcycling interests and all sorts of other oddities. Now, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, moto vlogging and uh, what is the best way to do it and what you should be thinking about uh, when you're getting out and you're starting out for the first time. Now, in essence, moto vlogging is exactly the same as vlogging or blogging. You are just giving your opinion about something, you're just talking about something, you're sharing your life experience, whether in person or actually out on a bike. What you want to try and do uh, with any kind of vlog or motor vlog, you to really start engaging with an audience, you really want to have you know your three acts of a story. You want the beginning, middle, middle and an end. You want to be able, to, there should be a point to the motor vlog. Now you could say, uh, okay, I'm just gonna ride into town and you know, I'm gonna show all the kind of cretins that I meet on the road. Uh, or it could be that you're gonna show, look, I'm gonna do my motor vlog and I'll show you how many wheelies I can pop, you know, on the road, that kind of thing. Whatever floats your boat, I'm not saying one is right or wrong, but what it is that you're gonna have a particular audience that you're gonna try and attract that might be interested in your particular style or your particular content. But whatever it is, it needs to have some kind of story. I'm not saying an official introduction and I'm not saying there has to be, uh, you know, a dramatic uh, sequence throughout the middle and then a final punchline at the end. But there has to be some kind of point to why you're inviting somebody to come and watch your motor vlog. Let's say, for example, you want to act a fool on your motorbike and you want to go around and pop in all sorts of stunts, uh, motor vlog, and having a great time. Now, that, that might be fine, and you might even attract a large audience for it. But that's not necessarily because they like your style, your storytelling. That's because they just want to see some, somebody prance around and you know, have a good time or whatever or doing, you know, daft things on a bike. The whole point, as I say, is about storytelling and or, or getting a point across. Now, it could be that you're trying to teach something or you're trying to share an experience, whatever it is. Now, for example, a lot of my motor vlogs that I do, especially most of them are all off-road riding, and they're off-road riding on dirt trails, um, all sorts of trails, uh, on big adventure bikes. And I sort of talk about the challenges of taking a big adventure bike, all the pitfalls, all the things that you need to talk about. So it, there is a beginning, and I say, right, I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna investigate here. Uh, then along the way, as I'm riding along, I'm talking about what I'm doing. Then at the end, there's there's a kind of a, you know, a conclusion to it where I kind of review what I've talked about and what I've written, and then give some final tips. That's kind of my style of a, of a motor vlog. Other styles which I do are my Moto Explore uh, videos where I actually go out and I go to a point of interest. So I'll be riding along and I'll say, okay, I'm gonna to go to this uh, old castle ruins today. I'm gonna to go to an old battle encampment, that kind of thing. And I'm gonna walk around and you know start talking about it. But it has a kind of beginning, a middle and an end. There is a ride to the place, there is the place itself, and then there's a conclusion at the end. So I'm telling a story and probably giving a bit of a history lesson at the same time. That's my style. That's not necessarily what you need to do, but there has to be some kind of structure to your motor vlogging. Now, how do you do it in, in technical terms? Well, the best thing to do is obviously to get an action cam, a GoPro or Drift, are my two favorites, uh, which I use. Um, on your helmet, you need to find somewhere to mount it. Now you can either mount it uh, on the chin, there are lots of chin adapters here, or you can mount it on the top or on the side, uh, that kind of thing. Now, the problem with mounting an action cam on the side is that you get a lot of the side of the helmet in, and I don't particularly like that, but lots of other people do, so it really depends what you like. Now, if you get it right on the side, that's probably gonna be nearest to the eye line, the eye point of view of the rider. And the chin is another one. I prefer to go on top because I get a more of a bird's eye view, plan view of the track ahead, but it is a little bit higher than you would normally expect it to be. Uh, but I say, you know, you can have that kind of thing. 
The other thing is to go for an audio setup. Now I've just got an adapter plug in here, but then I use a lapel mic, which I plug into that. And then the lapel mic, I either tape on the inside of the chin part of the helmet, or I wear a uh, face mask, like a neck tube type thing, and I just clip this to the neck tube, and then on where I go, so I've got decent audio. That also, having the mic inside the helmet, actually cuts out the wind noise, or the majority of the wind noise. You're gonna have a little bit, you still have a little bit of engine sound, uh, which is kind of important for motor vlogging, and you wanna have you know a little bit of atmosphere to the video as well. But how do you make a motor vlog? Well, you've got the sort of technical aspect of it, of just, you know, an action cam and good audio. That's what you want. You want to try and avoid wind noise at all time, which is kind of the curse of, you know, good audio uh, and good video making, I should say. Um, so that's something you want to, you know, pay attention to. But then, as I say, it's the content of the structure of the content. The type of content, that's entirely up to you and what your style is and what your particular videos are about. Just because you ride uh, in the countryside somewhere doesn't necessarily mean that your type of riding, your type of motor vlogging isn't going to be as appealing as somebody who rides in the city. Bearing in mind, lots of people who live in the city may really enjoy watching somebody else who's riding out in the countryside. Same for somebody who lives in the countryside, they may really enjoy what's uh you know people riding in the city there's always a purpose there's always an audience and there's always uh, somebody out there in the world who will want to watch that kind of thing but it is about providing a story uh, to your content or making it worthwhile or making it an educational instructional type thing like a how-to um, video how you do it is entirely up to you, but the more you try to structure your videos, uh, you have a point to them or have a story to them, the better you'll be in the end and the better received they'll probably become in the end as well, regardless of if you want to act a fool or you're being quite serious. Anyway, I hope this helps. I hope you uh, get an idea about motor vlogging. At the end of the day, you know, motor vlogging is just like anything on YouTube. You need to give it a go. Just get out there give it a go and, and see what you think. You know, the more you do it, the, the more confident you'll become and the better at it you'll be. If you check me in another two or three years time, I'm sure I'll be better than I am now. Uh, I'm certainly better than I am now than I was, let's say a year ago, two years ago, or, or actually when I first started, about five years ago, when I first started putting videos up. Um, I was very shy in front of the camera. Now I kind of, it's more matter of fact. When I'm motor vlogging, I now just introduce the beginning part, a face to camera, and an end part, another face to camera. And then the middle part is the instructional part or the talking part, actually, as I'm riding around. That's the way I do it. You don't necessarily have to do that yourself, but that's the way you can do it. Just tell your story. Don't try and copy anybody else's. Don't try and do something that you're not comfortable with. Tell your story, share your experiences, and then hopefully, you know, your the way you label it, the title, uh, the description, what tags you put in there, will determine whether you'll start getting hits and whether you start getting a following, which is really important. Get your following, build your community, your sort of fans who really enjoy your kind of content and, and talk to them and give them a bit of variation as well. And, you know, it's one of those things you're going to have to keep on experimenting with the content to actually fine tune what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, on my channel, I'm constantly experimenting with different variations and audio, camera, camera angles, adding music, not added music, the length of video, so on and so forth. Anyway, hope you found this useful. Please subscribe, hit the notifications bell, leave loads of comments, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers now.